Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Monday with Matt. I am Matt, and uh, thank you, first of all, to CIBC for sponsoring our C-SPANs. And uh, yeah, today we're going to draw stingrays. You probably figured that out already because there's stingrays all over my screen here. And uh, I wanted to start by just kind of briefly going over the species of stingray that you could find here at the Florida Aquarium. So when you come and visit us, you can see these five species of stingray and uh, four of them are actually stingrays that you can see in Florida as well. This one is the cow nose ray. These are the ones that you'll find in our touch habitat. Uh, this is the southern stingray. You might find those in, if you go to our Apollo Beach site when it's open down at the Manatee Viewing Center. And this one, you won't be able to touch, but they're in the wetlands gallery. And this is an Atlantic stingray. And these guys you can see in our heart of the sea exhibit or habitat. These are spotted eagle rays. This little ribbon tail ray, you might see them in our uh, touch habitat with these guys as well. But the reason I wanted to show you these is one, just so you could see them, but also, hey Tom, uh, also because I wanted you to observe the differences between all these different stingrays. So not all stingrays are the same, and when you're drawing stingrays, there's some things you want to pay attention to if you're trying to represent certain types or species of stingrays. Hello, mother. Uh, <laughs> so, for example, um, the southern stingray has this very specific kind of shape here on the top. The, the shape's kind of, kind of like this, um, as opposed to the Atlantic stingray where it kind of comes in, if that makes sense. A little bit of a, of a curve, an inner curve there. There's also differences in sizes and, and colors and things like that, but th when you're drawing them, you may be focusing on the shape. Look at the difference of the fin here, the roundness where it's a little bit more triangular here. And then you've got your cow nose rays, which are related to your eagle rays, more closely related to your eagle rays, and there's a real big curve there. And then of course, the head on that is quite a bit different. And then the most unique maybe of these is this blue spotted ribbon tail ray which has a very round body shape there so anyway wanted to show you guys those and uh and now we're gonna get started we're gonna draw some stingrays let me just get a new layer here so what i want to do first is i want to do just a top down stingray this is going to be one of the easier ways to to draw a stingray hello kimbra uh, sorry if I don't see everybody's messages, just I'm, I'm occasionally able to look at the screen and see what you guys are typing, but a lot of times I miss them. So it's not because I'm ignoring you, I just can't read and draw and talk at the same time. I can't really even hardly draw and talk. At the same. Anyway, all right, so here we go. So to, to draw, let's say we're going to draw like a southern stingray. So I'm going to do basically kind of a really wide triangle here like this, and uh, and then Try and make these even. That can be the trickiest part when you're doing like a top-down one. Hello, Rachel and uh, Christina. And, um, and then we're going to come in with another sort of triangle, but I'm going to give it a little bit of a, of a curve there. And this one is a little bit shorter than up here. We're going to bring these around here. So there's our top of our stingray body, our, our fins on either side. And then if you look at stingrays, they're flat on the fins. They've got a little bit more thickness usually right in the middle. So you might be able to represent that with some lines. Now, you, you probably would want to represent this with shading more likely, but you can kind of put some lines there to, to indicate that. And that's going to help you too when you start drawing other parts of your stingray. For example, the eyes kind of go right along there like so, okay? And then right behind the eyes, they've got some little openings that help them to circulate water over their gills, which are underneath. And that's important because if they didn't have these, then what would happen is uh, they'd have to keep swimming all the time to get that water going into their mouth and over their gills so they could get oxygen out of the water. But they don't have to do that because they've got these neat little devices. So on the back here, then we have the tail which tapers and gets smaller. I'm gonna curve mine around. There we go. And then underneath this tail where it starts, we have some more fins here. Okay, so we, it's starting to look like a stingray, right? 
And then, um, and of course, it's a stingray. It needs a stinging barb. Yes, Rachel, they are called spiracles. Thank you. You believe in spiracles. I see. Ha, that's good. I like it. Anyway, um, these, the barb on a stingray is different depending on the species. So let, let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to go back to our um, stingray species here. Turn this off for a second. So if you look, the barb on the cow nose ray is right here, right at the base of the tail. And they even have a little dorsal fin on the back. On our southern ray, it's down a little ways. Starts right about in here. And then it's even further down on our Atlantic stingray, pretty close to that base of the tail on our spotted eagle ray, and it's really far down on our ribbon tail ray. So these are more little differences if you're trying to represent specific types or species of stingray that you want to look at. So since this is kind of a southern stingray we're going with here, we're going to put our stinging barb right there, represent that with just a little triangle. And that's, this is your basic stingray. And then if I wanted to change it, you know, if I wanted to make an Atlantic stingray, I'd kind of do the same thing. But remember, I'm going to make this more round, like so. Have the tail come off here. Some of this is kind of similar. Put our eyes and our spiracles. Maybe this needs to be a little bit rounder. And then this is further down. So you can see here's another stingray if I wanted to do that. Um, spotted tail, blue spotted, spotted tail, blue spotted ribbon tail array. I'm combining my words. See, I'm telling you, drawing and talking, not, not compatible necessarily for me. Um, and now we're more like a, like a saucer shape thing. The tail length can vary too on stingrays. That's another thing that you want to look for when you're trying to draw specific types of stingrays. But these are, these are your basic stingray models, top-down dorsal view of the stingray. Let's get a little bit more creative and fun though. Let's do like a side view of a stingray. And again, we'll kind of do maybe a, a southern stingray. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna do like my rough guidelines here. So I'm gonna have this coming in kind of like a three-quarter top-down view. So I'm going to just very slightly lightly pencil in the body of the stingray here. And this is just a, a rough sketch. So I've got it kind of kind of rounded here. Here's the nose of our stingray here. And then we really want to represent this thicker part of the body. There, so there's a thicker part of the body. And even at the top here, towards the front, where the eyes are, you know, it kind of comes up like these ridges. So you can kind of draw that, get our spiracle back here. You won't see this eye because it's underneath that ridge. They also have little spines that you can kind of represent there as well. And then what I want to do though, I want, let's see, let me add the tail real quick. Get ahead of myself. Give it a little curve. It's kind of going off the page. It's a little bit of a, of a fin you might be able to see under there. I put our stinging barb there, which by the way, these stinging barbs, they're like, if you look at them up close, they're kind of these little jagged barbed, I think the, the barbs go the other way, <laughs> thing like that. So what happens is if you step on one of these, that's the way they protect themselves. And this is going to sometimes break off and whatever it sticks into. And, and it has a, a venom kind of coating it that creates a lot of pain. It's, it's just a way for them to protect themselves. So in Florida, of course, we do the stingray shuffle. And if you do that, you're not going to stomp on one of these guys. You won't hurt them. They won't sting you. But anyway, uh, this is okay. This is fine. But I want to make this stingray a little bit more interesting. So what I'm going to do, get our fins in here too. I forgot those. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give these, these fins some curve because when these guys are swimming, they, they are flapping their, their fins to be able to swim. So um, I'm going to have this one come and curve around like this. This is why we're doing this loose drawing here because I'm going to go over this and it's going to change a little bit. On this side, I'm gonna have it stick up like this. And I'm, I'm looking at a reference right now to help me out with this. There we go. Let me move him down a little bit there. And now we'll go over him with a, an ink brush just to, to really kind of solidify some of these lines and stuff. So let's see, we'll start here 
on the side. So here's where our fin is sort of flopping up here. Kind of coming underneath like so. Doing the same thing over there. the eye on here, this little ridge. Now I see Tom out there, uh, catch him tomorrow, where he sings all kinds of really cool songs for C-SPAN, lots of fun. He's like amazing, because he's constantly making new songs. Like I think there's been a new song several weeks in a row, and um, it's pretty cool. Check that out. We'll get our little stinging barb here. Maybe hint at this. And now, let's see, I'm gonna turn off my pencil layer underneath. And you can kind of see this outline of a stingray. We'll add a little bit of color here. Let's go, let's just give it a big brush. Now, stingrays are different colors, but a lot of stingrays do come in sort of a brown on top and a, a white or pale color underneath. And this species of stingray is no exception to that. So I'm gonna pencil that, or color this in real quick here. And you've heard me talk about this before, and it is something called counter shading, which helps these stingrays to blend in if you're looking at them from the top, because they're dark and they blend in with the sand and the bottom underneath, but they also, they also blend in if you are looking at them below, if, they're, if they happen to be swimming above you, which some stingrays will swim in the water column, some don't do it as often because of the sunlight coming through. Give his tail a little color here. Now, if you guys are drawing these at home, I would love to see your drawings. Of course, you can rewatch this and rewind it and pause it, rewind it, that's a callback, and, and stuff. So, and then post them here so we can see your drawings. All right, now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go to, let's see, I've got, I've got too many brushes here is what I've got. I've got like a little airbrush drawing here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna add some um, color variation just to kind of give some highlights. It's a lot bigger. Kind of highlight the top here, maybe highlight this fin over here. And we'll also give that's not very much darker. And then we want to color this underneath part. Kind of a white color. Maybe give the eye a little highlight. A little highlight right on the ridge there. That may be too much. But I noticed that when I was watching these back on camera, sometimes these colors don't show up quite as vibrantly. So I'm going to give it a little bit extra, maybe, <laughs> so you guys get the full view of what it looks like. Um, there we go. So there's maybe our, our quick and easy southern stingray from the side swimming around, because normally you're not gonna just see a straight on top dorsal view of a stingray. Turn these off and we're gonna go back to our pencil. So we can do another stingray. Now what I wanna do next is I'm going to do a spotted eagle ray because they're really cool. We have them here at the aquarium, and, and this was actually one of our camp shirts. Um, I designed the camp shirts, and this was actually the first camp shirt I designed. It was a spotted eagle ray. I'm not gonna do exactly the same thing, but pretty similar. So if you have a camp shirt from like five or six years ago, <laughs> you may recognize this. But the spotted eagle ray has a thicker body. So uh, kind of a thick body like this. It's kind of an oval shape here. And then they've got almost like a little beak that sticks out like so it looks like a almost looks like a little weird looking dolphin or something right but um but this comes through here and then they've got of course their tail that goes out this way i haven't added the wings yet right so we're going to add those so uh right about here i'm going to add some triangles but they're kind of curvy triangles like that and then these actually will come down 
like so. And then we got this other fin over here, which is gonna be a big triangle here. You can see our stingray coming along. They've got a little dorsal fin back here. They've also got these little fins on the side and a, door, and a uh, spine right there. And then of course, their eye like so. All right, so there's our spotted eagle ray, just our, our rough drawing. Now, uh, stingrays, like most sharks who they're closely related to, usually have five gills, and their gills are right here on the bottom. Their mouth is underneath. Um, if you see our cow nose rays, they have sort of this flattened head, um, and sometimes people think that their mouth is right here, but it's still underneath. Um, they just have these like lobe things that they use to help them get through the sand and stuff, looking for their favorite food, which by the way, most stingrays will eat things like bottom dwelling crabs, fish, shrimp, stuff that's on the bottom. That's what they typically like to eat. All right, we're gonna go to our inking brush here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Whoa, that is not my inking brush. <laughs> There we go. There we are. Now, here's one thing I haven't really talked about too much, and it's hard for me to do while I'm drawing on camera, but when you're drawing in on paper, or even when I'm not drawing on camera, and you wanna get these nice smooth lines, one way to do that is to try and remember to draw from your shoulder, not from your wrist. So you see me a lot, I'm drawing from my wrist, but if I'm really drawing, um, and not on camera, or especially on a bigger piece of paper or something like that, I'm gonna try and draw from my shoulder. And what it does is it makes it easier to get like a smooth line, where if you're drawing from your wrist, there's just more room for like wobble, drawing wobble. I don't know if that's a technical term or not. Little gills here. eye in there, and then we'll get our other fin. Dorsal fin back here, and pelvic fins, and a little spine. Now, what I want to do next is I'm going to make our race swim, see? <laughs> and then I'm going to turn off our pencil lines, because what I want to do is I want to add some some color to this, and of course, one of the things that makes spotted eagle rays spotted eagle rays is the fact that they have spots. So on the top of their body, they're kind of a dark brown, or they, they almost look, a lot of times they look like they're almost a, a blue or blue-black because of the water, and I think the way the colors work in the water and get different things get filtered out. We're gonna make this one a real dark brown, and I'm gonna try and represent that counter shading let me just get this whoops don't want to go there the underside of this fin though is going to be white so we can fill that in there the top of this one is going to be this dark color there we go fin back here Do, do, do. All right. Now underneath, we're gonna make it kind of a white color. And whenever I draw a color, whether it's on paper or whether it's digitally like this, uh, a lot of times I will fill larger spaces and then either work to get darker or lighter, depending on the medium that I'm working with. If you're working with something like um, paint, a lot of times you can get, you can work up to lighter, but if you're doing something like, last night I was making some marker drawings and um, I, had to, I had to keep in mind where my light stuff was and I had to work from light to dark. 
All right, now we're gonna add the spots of the spotted eagle ray. And here's what I'm gonna do, actually. Let me put these on another layer just so I can add some shading. And some of them are just spots like this, and some might be little rings. If you look at different spotted eagle rays, they will, they may have both, they may have just one. There's, you know, they look different. I'll give him a little highlight for his eye. There we go. And then we're gonna go back to this layer and I'm gonna add some of that shading again. Find my airbrush here. Make that a little smaller. Now, when I'm shading, I'm looking for, I'm looking at my reference. I've got a reference going here. I'm looking for where there's gonna be a little bit more shadow. So on the underneath side, of my ray on the fin here. There's gonna be more shadow. There's shadow underneath here on this stingray. And there's a little bit of, of shadow or probably coloration too on the edge of this fin. And a little bit more shading here. This, this fin's kind of bending around a little bit. And then we're gonna add some highlights as well. So I'm gonna start with this dark brown and I'm gonna just kind of bring this up a little bit. We'll see if that's too much there. Looks a little too red. Desaturate that a little bit. And we'll add some highlights so we can kind of bring back some of the features of this ray. This fin is, is lit up pretty good here. And this isn't perfect, but oop, I forgot to put white spots on his little tail fins. That's not nice. But if you're drawing this, I would encourage you to really focus on some references and take more time than I'm taking here to try and get all these done in one little setting. And you'll be able to create a really cool eagle ray. I'm going to add some more spots. There we go. Our spotted eagle ray. <laughs> All right. I'm going to turn these off here and uh, we'll see what time we have. Maybe time for another one. Get my pencil back. I think what I wanna do is, I wanna do one of these um, blue spotted ribbon tail rays, cause they're really pretty. So I'm gonna kinda of do a similar, similar to the Southern Stingray that we did. This is kind of, this is this weird shape here, is kind of the body form of this animal. Because I'm gonna make the, the fins kinda of curve up again Again, I'm looking at a reference so I can kind of see how this looks. I'm not following it 100%, but um, somewhat. Just to give me an idea of what I'm looking at. So here's the other fin, and then we've got our body that lifts up here. Other eye, we've got our spiracle here. And then our tail. Our spines down here, we got a little bit of a fin underneath the tail there. Okay, I think that's probably enough for me to go to my ink brush. The more you draw, whoops, I just turned off that layer. The more you draw, the better you'll be at just like being able to go off of just some, a loose sketch like this. When you first start, you, want to, you might wanna add a lot more detail and stuff, but the more comfortable you get, um, the more you just kinda of need the reference lines and, and then you can kinda of go from there. So I'm gonna add our eye in here. And I see that this eye is kind of, kind of sticks out too. 
like a little frog eye. Get our spiracle. Way. Now I notice on this reference that you can't really see the fins down here on this picture I'm looking at. Maybe one, there may be one of them. It's hard to tell. This may be one here actually hanging out underneath it. There is our basic body shape. And this one, I think I'm gonna color this one with like pencil. Now this ray is kind of a tan color. So I'm gonna find a tan color here. Got a little bit of a, of a greenish hue, but I think that's because it's underwater. But you know, I'm gonna see it, it's gonna be underwater, so I might as well make it look like it, it would look. Give this a really big pencil just so I can get through it. They're such beautiful stingrays. If you visit the aquarium and you get to the front, we have a statue of a manta ray, which is an amazing animal. And these big pelagic manta rays can get over 20 foot they call it wingspans, I think it should be fin spans. Right, we shouldn't call them wings, should we? If we're gonna call sea stars sea stars and not starfish, shouldn't we call, I don't know. Tom, what do you think? He's got a song about all that stuff. Get this in here. Underneath is still this kind of light pale color, like that. Uh, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of my shading before I put these electric blue spots on there. So I'm going to maybe add some, some dark shading elements to it. Try and figure out. Now, again, it's, this is not a flat surface here, so I want to try and represent that. If I can represent that more through shading, it's going to look probably better than if I try and represent it through lines. Depends though. A little darker here. And, and you can kind of figure out your lights and darks from experience, but I'm also looking at this reference, which makes it much easier to figure out where my shadows and highlights are gonna be. And we'll get our highlights in. Okay. Some down in here. I'm gonna try something crazy. Something you can do at home if you're working with pencil is you can use your finger, you can use a cloth, you can use a Kleenex, you can use a paper towel, you can get these special little paper rolled things uh, to blend that pencil together. And if you're working digitally, there's usually a tool called a blender. It'll do the same thing. Look at that. Very nice, okay. Now we're gonna to get to these electric blue spots. So there are blue spots on here, and um, let's see, make these a little darker. When I'm drawing these spots, one of the things that I wanna look at is like, for example, you wanna make sure and put a spot that's kind of hidden behind there. If all your spots are away from the edges, it may not look right or real. Some spots on there. I know we're running out of time here, so I'm uh, just gonna add some more. And again, if you're making these drawings, please submit them here so we can, so we can check them out. A little bit of blue up here as well. And 
There we go. All right, there we go. Our blue spotted ribbon tail array here at the Florida Aquarium. Listen, I wanna thank you guys for watching today. Thank you again to CIBC for making these C-SPANs possible. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow to listen to Tom banging out some awesome tunes. Until next time though, guys, I will see you later.